Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we're set to look at uh, what the national dailies are saying. Uh, we have a guest, Chris Kendo Wando, who's joining us live from uh, an undisclosed location. <laughs> a case, Chris Kendo Wando, good morning to you and thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you very much for having me this morning. With love from our Indian Fantastic. How are you doing this morning? Very, very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. Uh, Messi, a book was also here. Messi, good morning to you once again. Yeah, Kofi, thank you so much. Great, great, great. It feels great to be here. As always. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's get straight to the national dailies. And um, uh, we'll start with the Nation newspaper. Some interesting headlines on the front page of the Nation. Uh, uh, the big one there, Tidibua Debanjo under fire over Southwest Stand. I think it's um, a question we'll ask uh, our guest this morning is who is the leader of our Fanny Fair? Um, so, Chris Kendall, please write that down. It's the first question I'll ask you if I have the chance. Uh, Tinbu Adebanjo under fire over Southwest Stand. Uh, he's on his own, says YCE General uh, Secretary uh, Fashoranti remains a Fanny Fair leader. Um, a very controversial one. This follows the visit to the, uh, the foremost Yoruba leader, um, who was, is a former, some would say, uh, official head of uh, uh, Fanny Ferry. I don't know if that's the case uh, still. Uh, Adebanjo endorsing already over several months the candidature of uh, the Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Gregory Obi. And uh, just over the weekend, with Bola Tinubu's visit to Pa uh, Ruben Fasheranti or Fasheranti, and also several Yoruba leaders, including even the Oyo State Governor, represented by his deputy, uh, allegedly he. He uh, endorsed uh, uh, Paul Ahmed Tinbu, even though some reports say he's refuted that. Uh, but a very, very um, direct, clear, um, a very clear statement by the Secretary General of um, uh, 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 Fanny Ferry has said that there was an endorsement and had some glowing words for the APC presidential candidate. Let's move on to more from the nation. Ensure credible polls, Buhari tells police. A reps panel accuses all frames of tax evasion. Committee gives deadline Abiodun to FRSC trace and gridlock on Long Bridge. INEC, 22,538 new PVCs yet to be collected in Lagos. Uh, details on page 27 of the nation. No decision yet on who to vote as uh, president, Wiki says. No decision yet on who to vote as president, Wiki says. Will it be one man, one vote? Or with these. Uh, 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 governors and uh, social political leaders have uh, the power to tell people who to vote and influence uh, the outcome of the election. A picture there of Wiki and his group, I can see uh, by his left, Ikpazu, by his right, Otom, uh, you have Makinde, uh, as well as Sugwai, Enugu governor, right there in the picture. Let's move on. How lucky Porto boost economy by Somo Lubi has been completed and handed over to the operators. Federal government dismisses US UK terror alert on Abuja. Abuhari after London for medical checkup. Uh, 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 tabloid is alleging he's going there for uh, a major surgery. Uh, protest in Ondo over Monarch. Uh, some headlines on the front page of the nation. Messi, over to you. Well, let's take a quick look at the Punch newspaper this morning and find out what uh, the Punch has for Nigerians. Uh, looking at the front page, terror alert, federal government reassures Nigerians and pushes back against the United States and United Kingdom. Underneath, you have the first writer saying, foreign minister to warn ambassador against alarming advisories and terror alert irresponsible go about normal business security chiefs. Transcorp Hotel sets new security protocol. FCT please meet hotel operators. Well, even despite all of this, I think that those who residents, some residents of Abuja, have been about your businesses and seem not to, you know, uh, be concerned about all of this back and forth. Federal government exceeds loan targets by 1.12 trillion naira, borrows 5.3 trillion naira. I remember vividly when you have the finance minister, uh, 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 Zainab Ahmed, who constantly said that we were within the borrowing limit and all of that. So I'm, I'm wondering what the, you know, the response will be at this time. Naira devaluation will worsen Nigeria's food energy crisis. That's what the W, uh, that's the World Bank is quoted to say. 
And just before we move away, IOC's polluted Nigeria must face sanction. That's what the federal government is saying. Songwolu, Lagos, Khan, Anglican Diocese, Mon Bishop. Uh, final wish of Bishop we're talking about right there. And uh, there's also a picture of commuters stranded as Lagos commercial drivers protest extortion. It's a seven-day strike. It hasn't been easy for, you know, Lagosians. Marketers protest 185 per litre fuel threatened strike. And Lagos Ibadan Highway kidnappers killed in captives over ransom, collected 3.2 from my father. That's what, you know, lady is saying. And just before we move away from the punch, 2023 elections, don't be partisan. Buhari councils, please. Mm, it's a lot. That's the much we can take this morning. Let's move over to the leadership uh, with these headlines. PMB warns police, will of Nigerians must prevail in 2023, says officers must not aid rigging. Officers must not aid rigging. Uh, we have not released LP manifesto yet. It's uh, the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Gregory will be. More from the leadership. I was shot in the head. Ex-UI Deputy VC at Budget tells his abduction stories in everywhere. Uh, uh, it makes one interesting read. Again, President of the London for medical checkup. I think last time he was there, uh, Queen Elizabeth was still uh, alive. Uh, rising wheat, corn prices may worsen food crisis in Nigeria. A campaign, we are not broke, says, uh, say, Labour Party and NPP. All right, uh, let's see how that will pan out. Nigeria at risk of importing Ebola virus, NCDC warns. I didn't cons need to consult Pa Faso Ranti before Feni Fere endorsed to be a debanjo. A U.S. terror alert, uh, needless, no cause for alarm, FG. Headlines on the front page of the leadership. Away from the leadership, we'll have the Nigerian Tribune, and we'll just move quickly for the want of time. U.S. security alerts needless, no cost for alarm. That's what the NSA is saying. And the construction of $1.5 billion, Lekki Port completed, Lekki Freeport Terminal takes over. Gunmen abduct four Ibadan bound travelers in Ikiti. Again, you find Buhari leaves for a medical checkup in the United Kingdom. Meiti alert list condition for peace in troubled communities demands grazing of uh, 415 grazing reserves. Uh, do you find another one saying Atiku group falls endorsement of Tinubu in Accra? Uh, this are some of the headlines we can take this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. That being said, let's bring in uh, 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 our guest, Chris Candy Wando, uh, at this point. Chris, let's start with the Fanny Ferrer story. Um, is there a, uh, um, an issue you feel in all of this? Um, you know, is there a division in Afeni Ferrer? You think this is just something that the politicians are trying to hype or whip up? Let me say. But the fact remains that. Uh, we have to put it in a contest. Uh, who is the leader of Afeni Ferry as of, as of now? Um, I know that some months back, or a year or two ago, uh, Chibuben uh, came out to say that he's getting old and uh, he wants to relinquish uh, his leadership of that pan Europa group. And uh, it has been established that if you put it in the normal contest, uh, of party service, he has retired. So, uh, Chief Adeba Anjo was appointed as the acting leader of the Afeni Ferry. So, by all intents and purposes, uh, Chief Ruben Faso has uh, ceased to be the leader of Afeni Ferry. If you go by that, uh, if you are serving in the military and you rise to the, uh, to the position of a uh, general or even begin there, whichever one you are. Once you are retired, you are retired. It does not necessarily mean that you cannot engage in other activities, including politics, which you can do. But by my own understanding, by my understanding of politics, that ought to be. But it's so obvious that a lot of politics are playing out in the Southwest and within the uh, Panyurag group at any very. Uh, so, Chief Adebanjo came out to speak on behalf of Afeni as the acting leader. By endorsing uh, Peter Ruby 
which are you have consistently added green glory. Or is it green glory or green glory that you added? I'll be happy to say that <laughs> consequently now. Uh, and that doesn't seem to sit well with uh, the personality who are doing the work in front of um, Ashwa Dibola Admin Jr. at the weekend. Blessing. But did he really endorse Ashwa Dibola Admin Jr.? That is what we ask because I never, I, I didn't see in any of the speech, either on video or uh, the press release, the where it was stated that he endorsed him. But even if he did, it may just be on his capacity as a person and probably not as um, a leader of a friendly friend. I think that is my own personal understanding of the issue at stake, but it's obvious that a lot of politicking is going on, and we continue to see this as we move into 2023. Uh, let's share your thoughts on uh, another interesting conversation. You talked about the economy and uh, the fact that the federal government has exceeded its borrowing capacity or limit by uh, 1.15 trillion naira. It sets out to borrow, you know, 1.5 trillion or thereabout. Let's have that of talking about all this. Um, you have to talk about uh, it. Because I just talk and talk on television or as media men, and nothing comes out of it. So it's, it's a waste of my personal time talking about this issue of because whether, whatever we say, they will go ahead and do what they want to do. And they, they have consistently said that. Um, the finance minister said that they have not reached the ceiling. Uh, they are borrowing ceiling. I don't know what their ceiling is. Probably by the time they hit 300 trillion. Um, when Buhari will be leaving in, in 2022, that would have been the city. But the National Assembly, which ought to also be a kind of check on some of the activities and come out, especially the Senate, to say whatever the president brings, they will approve. So what are we discussing? We have said time and time on this program that he who goes borrowing goes a sorrowing. They will continue to sorrow uh, until this government leaves. And come to think of it, we are not even paying back the debt. What we are paying is now is the interest on the loans. And we are at a point where using close to about 90% of our earnings to pay, to, to repay um, this loan. So, what it, uh, of what benefits is this to us? So, um, what we are doing now is just like uh, uh, late Chief Bola Ige said: we don't sit down to look, we sit down to look, and um, let them go as much as they have. But it's left for Nigerians. The election is here once again. No, we don't enter one chance, as we used to say in Lagos and uh, Lagos Bala, uh, because it's obvious that, um, uh, as they say in my Igbo language, uh, they, they sold, they sold, uh, uh, we sold a um, uh, cat and bought monkey. At the end of the story, you still have a stupid, a stupid animal in your house. It's obvious that this government is not going to let go. Instead of looking for other avenues of making money, they have decided that the way they are going to go is boring and boring. And um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a big and huge disappointment for me. Uh, but what options don't have? Do we have any say? We don't have any say on this. Right, let, let's look at the, 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 the punch. I think the Nigerian Tribune also carried this uh, story. Uh, the Nigerian put, Tribune put it this way, US security alert needless, no cause for alarm. And the Tribune cites a national security advisor uh, Mongolo, who says, quote, I would like to assure all citizens uh, of this country that any exaggerated sense of insecurity, any hype about uh, disintegration of our security forces, intelligence agencies is unfounded. It says the issue, or he said the issue uh, of Nigerians being made to panic is unnecessary. I uh, want to dispel any illusion about any heightened uh, sense of insecurity. It is false. It is irresponsible uh, for anyone to give that signal. But uh, we go over to the punch which put it this way. It says terror alert FG reassures Nigerians uh, pushes back against US UK. So what are your thoughts on on this? Because we're hearing the foreign minister is going to send a warning to ambassadors of the countries uh, affected against alarming advisories. Um, is this the federal government trying to prevent public panic? Uh, or this is the case as far as you can tell? Because we are aware that several, some malls in Abuja had been uh, uh, shut down to the public, close to the public. We're aware of uh, some security operations, you know, in parts of Abuja, uh, in, in which some terror cells were uncovered and uh, um, um, deactivated, let's call it that. What are your thoughts on this recent government rhetoric? <laughs> try to debunk those information and try to reassure Nigerians. The federal government is doing as much as it could as well 
to reassure Nigerians that they are safe in their country. And that is what they can do, reassure. But the value means that can you fought the intelligence, the high intelligence intel given by this Western country. Um, I really doubt it. Come to think of it, personally, I still believe that, uh, you know, the uh, the Minister of Information came out some weeks, uh, some days back to say that this information was not passed to us. Why they didn't say this? And I don't believe that this um, uh, this countries and. Uh, uh, we have such information without passing it to our government. I stand to be corrected. I don't think in the diplomatic circle that is that is not the way it is international relations. They must have passed it, I want to believe, to our agencies, but they probably didn't want to leak that out to the uh, to, the, to Nigerians. And they don't forget the adversary by these countries was to their nationals, not to Nigerians. They say our nationals in Nigeria should take care and be able to take care of their security, and if necessary, they should leave the country for now. Canada has come up with that. Australia, um, United States, uh, United Kingdom, and one or two other countries. So uh, they were advising their citizens in Nigeria. So, but the federal government is doing what? If they see there is nothing like that, so why is Abuja totally continuing off? If you go to Abuja, from there is there is, there is, there is uh, checkpoints every part, every part of um, of um, Abuja. And so many uh, businesses have already been affected. Some malls have closed down. Some businesses have closed down for fear of this attack. But my personal opinion, I'm not a security expert, but my personal opinion could be in that I wish sure now we are not being sold a dummy. What I mean by that is that when we are trying to, a dummy could be sold uh, by these terrorists that they are going to attack Abuja. Why we concentrate on Abuja and these people decide to strike where we are not looking at, and some states that we are not looking at. That is my personal fear. Um, so, but I hope that, as we say in law, uh, the field is so called is covered by these security agencies, so that we will not this prediction uh, given to Nigeria, but uh, this uh, international communities will not continue. Don't forget, it's not only Nigeria. There was also a alert raised in South Africa by the United States, and the, and I saw how the South African government reacted to that, unlike what we have here. All right, then uh, let, let's quickly move away from that. We still have more interesting headlines, especially uh, on the Nigerian Tribune here. It talks about uh, the issue of Meiti Allah and the fact that they've, they have a condition for peace in troubled communities. They demand uh, the gazetting of 415 grazing reserves. Your thoughts? Yes, I to his statement or his uh, whatever advice he wants to give, they are Nigerians, and where they think, I think what they fight for is the protection of uh, their uh, their members. Uh, but Meiji Allah in the past has not been seen to have helped matters. Actually, when you see the killings that happened in Benue and some other parts of the country by alleged headsmen, the way they came out to defend their members uh, is nothing to write home about. So, but if they are taking the view by trying to give suggestion as to how we can ameliorate some of this uh, problem, then all well and good. Um, so, for me, it's neither here nor there. I rather believe in action than just be. But Kofi and uh, Messi, the news broken this morning, let me just bring it to the full, is that the, uh, the MM2, the local airport, uh, Matala Mohammed Airport MM2, has been shut down this morning. Uh, against flight coming in or going out by aviation workers over the sack of some of their members um, by by cutting the uh, the owners of that airport so no flight is going out and no flight is coming in this morning so uh, anybody flying into lagos to mm2 or how they fly they're supposed to come to mm2 they just have to look for alternate not alternate routes alternative routes now which is the old domestic uh, wing and there are just few uh, airlines that use that I think this is information is necessary for your viewers so that they will know if they are heading to the airport either from any part of the country as opposed to coming to MM2 this morning. <clears throat> Chris Kennewaru, thank you for that. Um, uh, some people will say, oh, well, it doesn't it does affect them because many people have stopped flying uh, since uh, the, uh, the air, air tickets prices uh, went astronomically up. <laughs> Interesting development. <laughs> Let, let's go over to the, the Nation newspaper. Um, it's uh, given us a, a daily account of what's been happening 
in the People's Democratic Party, no surprises there. At the left corner of that paper, uh, we can see uh, this story about the PDP. It says uh, to uh, the River State Governor, yes, OBK, uh, says that uh, the state, that's his state, River State, has not taken a position on who to support for the presidency on February 25. Um, of course, he was uh, uh, attending, uh, he countered a statement attributed to the former transportation minister, B.A. Sekibo, um, who is supposed to be his ally on his relationship with al Haji Atik uh, And of course, uh, he wanted to counter the impression that that statement had made about he at um, uh, relationship with Atiku. According to him, he says it'll be, the paper says, he says it'll be wrong for the former minister to equate his personal relationship to Atiku, who is uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP, to that of the state. And what are your thoughts on this whole, you know, PDP situation? And I think it also dovetails into the uh, social political organizations. Um, are, are we over overvaluing the influence and the impact of these politicians to determine where the popular vote goes? It is true that the politicians have the right to decide who he wants to support and uh, who he's not going to support. He has said that severally, um, that uh, his, uh, the vote of the rivers people is not for uh, everybody, and that they're going to decide this time around who they're going to vote for. And his uh, action and his dissatisfaction with PDP, especially as regards the chairman of the party and who he's insisting must be, is swelling his address. Don't forget about two days ago, or some few days back, um, the governor, some governors of APC also visited him in River State. I had this to seat his support for the candidature of um, uh, their presidential candidate. Uh, uh, Mackinde uh, was deputy was seen at that at very very uh, visit by Tinubu, say certain things uh, about. Um, on your state and the PDP and his man the mandate of his principal uh, uh, government Pinde to support the candidature uh, that selected or uh, put by Yurubas, uh, uh, whichever that means. But let me, so uh, this will continue to move, continue going um, back and forth on the election. But let me put this to you, Kofi uh, Mesi, that the president and most of those uh, papers captured in their, uh, in their front pages. The president was in Nigeria yesterday, where he uh, he opened a three-day conference uh, of senior officers of Nigerian police uh, who are looking at preparation for the 2023 election. Uh, and the president was a, a very very emphatic in his uh, uh, directive that the police should be as neutral as possible and try to be as professional as possible uh, in the 2023 election and make sure that this election is uh, devoid of any rank or uh, any bias or whatever. And he stated it once again that the greatest legacy he wants to do for this country is moving a, uh, a, a making sure that that election is free and fair. He stated that I was at that conference uh, and I saw it live. And where he stated that, and what he's trying to say in a sense is that is that we are ready for 2023 and all relevant agencies of government, including the security agencies and INEC. INEC was also there. Uh, um, the INEC chairman was represented by one of his uh, resident electoral commissioners, uh, uh, Major General Khalid retired. And the emphasis has been that this election, 2023 election, is going to be like no other. So I hope and I pray that the government will live up to its word and give all the necessary support to the relevant agencies, including INEC and security agencies, to be able to do their job. Um, the, the chief of defense staff also made a statement uh, at that conference. He was there live. And he said that they, within the next few months, or yeah, they want to um, take up their primary responsibility, which is that of defending the country. They are looking forward to handing over the internal security of the nation to the police and go back to their primary responsibilities of defending Nigeria from external aggression. So those are the part of the issue. So you can see that everything is being done, uh, revving up for the 2023 election and every agency of so, government. So, so we, we have and, to know. Uh, in, yeah, Chris, in, in one sentence or one word, are you confident 
that the police, because of what the president has said in the way which is captured in the papers this morning, the police will be impartial in next year's general election. Just one word, yes or no? Kofi, if I, if I, if you take into concern what happened in Ekiti and Oshu, and they can replicate that, then all will are good. I believe the police can do it. Thank you. Well, yes. well, all right. Well, well, Thank Chris, you so we need much. to go now. Yeah, we need to go. Uh, we, we, we'll be looking forward to having you next week on the program. And of course, uh, uh, with your expert analysis, as always, we appreciate your time. Uh, Chris Kenewando, Chartered Mediator and Consulator, has joined us live from uh, the city of Oweri. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. That's the size of it. We take a break now. And when we return, it will be time for us to delve into our first major conversation right here. Please stay with us.